have a bit of a dilemma. <laughs> it's the story of my life, a dilemma. Um, I found some good fabric for the apron. I got out my pattern pieces. I started ironing them out. And I realized that a rather important piece is missing. <laughs> Um, the waistband for the apron is missing. So here goes uh, learning challenge number one. I may have to create a pattern piece for that particular piece. So I have my, my pattern instructions. I cut this out quite a long time ago, as I said. So I have my pattern pieces in different sizes and different bags. And I had my bag for my apron. And <laughs> I don't know where it went. And I have no idea, really. Um, I'll probably find it once I get the uh, this room cleaned up a little bit better. So we may do a little pattern drafting. And what that looks like is this. So this is the pattern. This is the uh, front sides. I think this is in f like four sections. So there's a center section, which is basically this cut on the fold. And then there's two side pieces. I don't know exactly how that works. But anyway, um, we'll figure it out. But this is the part that goes on the waistband. And so I think if I multiply this time, this distance times four, and then make a nice rectangular piece that's that long plus enough to tie your button on the back, I think that'll work. So we'll give it a shot. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. I just wanted to talk for a minute about methods that I'm using and why I'm using them. So this project is a little weird for me because it was originally more of a costume type of project than a historical reproduction. And I'd really like to do more historical reproduction kinds of work, but what ends up happening is I can't justify the time to, to go into those that kind of detail, those kind of methods, um, they just take a lot longer and require more expensive materials. So, um, so I've done s quite a bit actually of like costumey kinds of historic reproductions where the pattern is something that's close to an original pattern, but then the methods that I use are more stage oriented. So. Um, for example, when I was young, I had a friend who was very much into stage costuming and she taught me how to just do line up all your seams at once and run them all through the machine and don't stop and backstitch and all that stuff you learn in home ec but just go as fast as you can because the idea is to get it done quickly and make an impression of something rather than actually doing the thing like but my heart has always been in doing the actual real craft work what i'm doing right here is sort of a hybrid I love the to do things like I say historically, and the pattern is relatively historical, but um, it, it is a commercial pattern. It's done on tissue paper. When I'm cutting it out, I'm using a cutting, uh, like a cutting wheel that you would use for uh, for quilting or something. Like you're going through several layers of fabric rather than scissors. Um, using tools like plastic rulers and things like that in order to make the work go a little bit faster. And because, frankly, I don't have really expensive, well, I do have a set of really expensive high-end uh, fabric cutting scissors, but, but you know, I, I don't, um, I can't rely on things that are ancient because I don't have a lot of ancient things. So this project is actually, I'm trying to do it in a hurry. It's more of an impression than an actual thing, more, more of a, <laughs> My favorite, my favorite uh, quote actually is Miss Piggy from, um, from the Muppets, I think it's the Muppets Take Manhattan. It's the one where they go to Paris and Miss Piggy is like a fashion designer in Paris. And she goes through and she's telling everybody what to do and um, someone says, we don't want, a, we, would, we don't want the whole thing. We just want a hint, a soupçon, an appetizer. And I think about that a lot when I'm doing these kinds of jobs because it's just that you're giving someone the impression of something, but you're not actually doing the whole thing. You're just giving them the, a little hint, a soup song, an appetizer. 
Um, that's kind of what we're doing here. I'm hoping to get to do some hand embroidery on this project, however, because I'd really like there to be some detail. Definitely going to work on buttons, definitely going to work on buttonholes, definitely going to work on a little bit of embroidery, at least around the edges and corners of the apron. Um, but I would like to do at least a little bit. And there's a very simple embroidery pattern that's included with this pattern that is, is very simple and quick kind of embroidery. But it makes me sad to do those kind of projects because what I'd really love to do is do some really beautiful embroidery on the corners of the apron and then wear it a bunch to somewhere, but where are you gonna wear it? So um, I am kind of hoping to look into some events that are done specifically by people who hang out in the historic clothing world and see if I can find some good excuses to spend the time on doing really awesome projects and, and develop that more. But um, at this point, I live in Podunk, USA, and I live a million miles from anywhere where there are other people that are doing things. And so, um, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, aprons, why aprons? You would want to protect your clothing because it took a long time and a lot of expensive materials to put together. It was much more expensive back then in time and effort and energy and materials to actually make your clothing. And so you kept those pieces of clothing for much longer than we keep them now. You tended to take them apart and put them back together in some other way or hand them down to other people. Um, clothing was not something that you just threw away because it took tons of time. Being a sheep farmer and understanding that it takes an entire year to grow a fleece and then it takes an entire few days to shear them all and then it takes another couple of days if you work at it and it alone on washing the stuff and getting it carded and combed out and then another several weeks to spin it and weave it and or knit it or whatever it took a long time and a lot of energy to actually make those pieces of clothing and so um, so people wanted to protect their clothes from stains and wear. Well, when I was younger and I had six children at home, what I would notice is that I wore like the scruffiest secondhand t-shirts you ever thought of. Because if I had nice clothing, especially if it was white, immediately a baby would barf on it, or I would do the dishes, or I would cook spaghetti, or I would do something that made something happen to the front of my clothes. And I was continually, constantly embarrassed because I had spots and, you know, stains all over my clothes. Well, that would have been a no-brainer. Wear an apron, <laughs> you know? We still have this problem today, but we don't think of it as a problem because our clothes are so throwaway that we just go, okay, well, I got a stain, I'm just going to throw it away. Or I'll give it to, you know, Salvation Army or something. But... I believe in, in my heart of hearts, I, I wear things the way everybody else wears them. I think about things the way everybody else thinks about them. But I'm beginning to shift my thinking about that. And I actually may cut out an extra apron and use it around the house. And that to protect the front of my clothes because I still do things. I still do the dishes. I still make spaghetti, <laughs> you know, even though I'm older and I don't have little kids barfing on me so much anymore. I still have those things happening to my clothing. So back in the days that we're trying to recreate the image of, they definitely wore aprons anytime they were pretty much doing anything. And you may be wondering why I'm doing a pioneer dress at Christmas time. Why am I doing that? Well, we're having a, a Christmas program about a particular Christmas that happened in the pioneer days when the, when the Mormon pioneers were going into the Salt Lake Valley that first Christmas, we have a little story that was written by one of the people that were there at the time uh, about what that first Christmas was like. And it was very simple. They had a boiled rabbit for dinner, which they hadn't had anything but a little bit of flour and some root, roots that, wild roots that were growing around, some thistle tops and all kinds of crazy things that you wouldn't think about eating. But that was their Christmas and they were so excited to have some rabbit. And so that's why we're doing this a recreation of um, pioneer clothing for this Christmas program that we're doing 
and it is coming up really quickly so I do need to get the apron done because it's coming up very quickly within the week <laughs> and so I usually I won't say that I won't say usually I take my time and plan these things out and have them done you know hours in advance or days in advance usually it's hours and I'm usually finishing up which is why the dresses aren't completed because the last time I did this I thought oh I'll make two dresses that'll be great I'll make three or four more for my kids and I made them some and I made them some and then I needed to make my own and there was a week left so I sewed like the wind and that's why all the seams are coming apart but um, but aprons that's why the aprons and that's why I kind of want to take my time a little bit and make them a little more special than we did before I would be tempted to actually sew them by hand and practice my hand stitching techniques I just don't know that I'm gonna have enough time to do that but we'll see um, I may take it easy on myself cut it out with the with the rotary cutter um, do some little simple hand embroidery on it and call it good and then go on to the next project in January and do that one more the way that I would really like to do it taking my time and doing it well and actually um, having it be much more authentic than what I'm making now but for now we can use the theater techniques to sew it I may have to make an extra one for a friend who's also performing in this Christmas program and if that's the case I'll have even less time <laughs> to do finish work but um, anyway it'll be fun it'll be fun to try I am going to go ahead and start cutting So this is a normal, normal seam, and what I did was just press it. I made a little mistake when I was cutting, but that's okay. It's in the seam allowance, and it's well uh, beyond where the seam actually is. But basically what I did was I put the two pieces together, sewed them together, and then pressed this flat. But as you can see, just like on our other garments that I was showing you earlier, if this gets washed, these seams will just come shredding apart. They'll just come right apart. So we need to take care of this seam edge. Now what I think I can do actually, even though I did kind of a wide um, seam here, if I trim this down, because it's muslin, it doesn't have a right wrong side. And so I can actually correct it. And I think I'm going to do that because these are the seams that are gonna get the most wear. These are the, like the main apron seams. Those are, that's the top of the pocket. This is going to be the bottom of the, um, there's going to be a ruffle at the bottom, so there's a, a ruffle attached at the bottom there. But um, this is going to see a lot of wear against the other clothing. So I am going to go ahead and do a French seam, which actually, bless their hearts, is going to be, this is the inside pocket. Now this is a great pattern because it's got pockets everywhere. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But what they actually had me do, and you might have seen that in the time lapse, is actually sew the seam several times. So I sewed it the first time, then I pressed it open, then, then I turned it, and then I sewed it again, and then I turned it again. So this is actually, the entire seam is enclosed. You can see there's layers and layers of fabric in that seam, right? And what that does is it encloses, all the raw edges are down inside this seam. And that's what I want to have happen on the outside of the apron as well, not just in the pockets. But in the pockets is brilliant because you know when you, you know, go to pick this, get stuff out of your pockets, there's going to be dirt and lint and whatever else in there. So we definitely want our pocket seams to be fresh seams, which was very nice, nicely instructed in the, in the pattern. So 
So that was a beautiful thing. Now I did want to talk a little bit about how I'm going to attach these pockets. So this may look a little strange, but actually what's going to happen here is that the um, there's a little slit almost exactly like this on the apron. And it, it's just like an open pocket. There's going to be a waistband along here. And then you're just going to slide your hand into this sort of open pocket. It's not going to be like a, a seam pocket like you normally see on things. It's a little bit of an open pocket, which makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of, which is happy. But what I find is with the machine sewing, you come down, you sew this seam, you get to this corner, you kind of get wonky on the corner, you come back. I actually like to do a little uh, um, reinforcement seam there and then come back. And if there's any problem with the tension on your machine, and I definitely have some tension problems with my machine, is you end up with a huge bunch of fabric right here and a lot of thread and stuff right in this point. So I think I'm actually going to hand stitch at least this corner of this um, attachment to the actual apron. And that might help with, you know, some of that bunching that it's just not going to make it lay flat, which I really want the front to lay flat. So I'm uh, probably going to do some hand stitching on that part. But I will go do the French seam on there and I'll show you how I'm doing it as I go. So I'm just trimming this seam down. It's a little tricky because I already pressed it open, but I'm just going to trim it down to take some of the bulk out of that seam. And then when I do the top stitching here, I'm going to do it super close so that um, because I had done sort of a large seam there before, um, it won't take up too much space. But you can see that that's well trimmed down. hope you can see that. It's well trimmed down to from where it was before. It looked like this before. So I'm going to trim down this side and then we'll flip them so that so that that seam is enclosed in the second seam and then we'll we'll sew a second seam here and that will actually be the inside so this will be the right side as we finish up if that makes sense. And so here is our finished French seam. All enclosed. Um, what was really interesting though is that I did when I trimmed it, I stitched it actually quite close. So there's a little peeking out of that uh, seam, the previous edge in that seam, but I've trimmed it down to where it's not really noticeable. And now I've got this beautiful seam on the inside. I haven't pressed this yet, so it's a little puckery, but um, but yeah, now I have this nice enclosed seam on the inside. And I'll show you that when the entire project's complete. Now what I'm going to do is put the ruffle on the bottom, um, set in the pockets, and do the waistband. And I'm just not going to bother you with too much more, but um, just thought you'd like to see the French seams. Well, I've actually been working on the apron quite a bit um, by hand in the car in the middle of the night because we had to take some friends over to Seattle and drop them off and then pick them up again. That's like a four and a half hour trip one way. So um, I didn't want to quit working, so I kept working. Um, I did do some by hand. I did the actually the bottom gathers by hand because... I could never get those right with the machine, so they'd always bunch up and act weird, and I don't know if I'm just in a big hurry when I'm using a machine thinking that it should be faster, but I really like the way the gathers turned out on the ruffle on the base of the, um, of the apron, so I'll show you. So, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's a little bit wrinkly because I've been working on it some more since, but but much more even gathers than I've ever been able to do before. And then I did break down and use the sewing machine for the top um, waistband, which is a little bit wide. I may fold it down, but um, but yeah, very long, which is nice because it will suit the dress better that way. And 
anyway it's just about done I'll give you a little uh, picture when I finish and get it on oh I did want to show you my super awesome bag this is actually a bag that I got for knitting projects but because it's uh it's sort of a leather like plastic on the inside and, and it's got a little pockets on the inside I love this bag it's just about the right size for a sewing project like this where you're taking things um, along by hand doing things by hand and you've got like several yards of fabric in here and it fits just right and the pattern can go in there um, the next pattern I'm working on can go in there all the different scissors and such that you need with you and then it's also got like a larger pocket that I keep right now it's got knitting stuff in it but um, yeah it's a beautiful size it's perfect and then it's just made out of felt on the gray part and then it snaps at the top so super simple easy to carry around I've actually taken it on airplanes and everything else I just love this bag and I got it at a yarn store that no longer exists but I will try to find the the purchasing information and put it in the description down below. So, the apron is done. Yay! I did a lot of work on it over the weekend, traveling, and I showed you the bag and all that stuff. Um, but I came home. Today was kind of a busy day. We had to make food for the party that we're performing at. But we got the apron done! So, modeling time. So the biggest trick was getting it short enough, and it's still not quite short enough, but it's got these cool pockets in the front, because everybody, especially women working in the field, need pockets. Um, I did, was a little bit disappointed I should have probably brought the sides over more and more gathering in the front, but the waistband is a little bit big. Like, I did it this way first, but then way too long, way too wide, so, um, but I'm just folding it over, so I had some nice buttons on the back, but I just folded it down and kind of rolled it, and that way it was shorter because I'm short and it, um, it was dragging the ground, actually. But thank you, Kelly, for helping out with uh, some consulting on that and on the uh, shoulders of the dress. Thank you for your comments on that. Kelly Gray, bless your heart. I love you. Kelly and I grew up in high school together, went to high school together, and she does historic reconstruction of clothing as well and does reenactments back east in Maine. So, yay for Kelly. Anyway, love you all. The apron is done. And then I was realizing as I was coming home, oh my gosh, I have a presentation that I'm going to be giving in about six or seven places on weaving in the weaving and spinning in the 1800s. So, now I have the full outfit. I can actually do it in outfit, which would be really awesome. So thanks for following me. Um, we'll be doing a couple of more projects. The dress form is coming up pretty quick. And then in January, uh, I'll give you a little intro about the January projects in a little while. But thanks for following with me. If you want details on the apron or have any other questions or anything, just put them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. We'll talk, see you later. Bye.